Terrence Lam here for another tutorial episode. Today's episode is on focus stacking. We will utilize Adobe Photoshop CC to do this for us. There's lots of other software packages out there, but if you already have Adobe Photoshop, I want to demonstrate how it's done. Focus stacking is often used to increase the depth of field without losing the isolation you might have in a background. This is great for macro photography, product photography, or even landscape photography. The main benefit is to keep your aperture low so it doesn't get softened by the higher apertures like f16 and up. I'm going to demonstrate this today with a simple product sample and utilizing only three images. Normally it would be better to do it with nine or more, but for this tutorial I'll just demonstrate it with the three. You'll need a stable tripod, a macro lens setup, and a, optionally a focusing rail. A focusing rail is the preferred method as it gives much finer control over how you focus back and forth and often focus rails have indicators to tell you how close or far you are to your subjects. All right, let's get started here. So the first thing you're gonna to need to do is you're gonna go into the windows, and as always with most of my tutorials, I always suggest for you to reset your workspace so that it is on the essentials default. It's already set to the essentials default, so you'll see that none of my palettes will change, but always start off with that. So you head over to the file and go over to scripts. We're gonna load up the pictures here, and you're going to go over to load file into stack. Look for the files that you have set up, select all of them, hit open, and it should load them all up into this window. Don't worry about any of these buttons in here. They should be all turned off uh, by default and hit OK. Once all the images are loaded, you'll see that they'll load up into your layers palette here into in one image file. We're gonna go in here and talk a little bit about what it, what's happening here. So I have my three files here. Now three files isn't necessarily the best way to go about doing a focus stack. I always suggest doing probably more like nine images. You wanna have like three or four between. It just all depends on the size of the object. Now this object is a little bit larger and I shot from a little further back. So. Of course, results are going to vary, and based on experience, you're going to find out what is the exact and optimal distance. But the whole idea here of doing focus stacking is to use the lens wide open so that we can maintain either a blurry background, in this case, my backdrop here, that I want to maintain a nice blurry backdrop, so that way uh, we got a good sense of depth of field in here, but we want to have our entire object nice and focused. If we get in a little closer here, you can see what's going on here. My image is nice and sharp. In here, in this case, would be the mid-ground. So that's actually my, my I'm going to move the layers over here so that it's in the mid-ground. My rear, uh, rear field here, you can see that the back ridge of that can holder is what I set as my maximum focus point and the, the furthest away from me. The closest point, let's just shut off some of these layers so you can see. In the foreground, I have the, the logo of the bottles here looking nice and sharp and close to me. So as I go further back, there's my mid-ground, a little bit sharp in this area, and then my, my rear. One thing I also want you to notice is that there is a shift in the image. So you can see that the image is shifting as I'm clicking it further and further back. This is called focus breathing. So as I move in and out, that's going to change the scale of the image. Whether you're using the focusing ring on your lens or if you're using a focusing rail, you're going to have some of this change. So that brings to our next step, which is really important. I'm going to turn all of these on, and I'm going to shift and select all of these images. Once I have these selected, I'm going to go up to the edit function here, and I'm going to go scroll down to the auto align layers. So my auto align layers, I'm going to use the auto function. This is a really important step. Don't worry about any of the lens correction or the geometry correction. Just use the auto setting and hit OK. Now that that's done, I'm going to zoom out here a little bit so you can see what's going on here. You can now see that the edges have actually shrunk in a little bit. You can see the classic checkered backdrop to show that there's a transparency in there. And if I click on these images, you can see that the images have all scaled down. But the most important thing you'll notice, let's zoom back in here, is that there is no breathing going on now. This is a really important step that you need to do in order to do focus stacking successfully. So I'm going to select all these images, go back to the edit, and I'm going to select the auto blend layers. Again, select 
the default setting, which would be the stack images and the seamless tone colors, and hit OK. Now, depending on how fast your computer is, this might take some time to process. Another thing that you should consider, too, is the more layers that you photograph, so as you rack your focus closer and closer to the back of your object, the more images that you capture, the less likely you're going to get errors in the document. However, the more layers that you, ha you start with when you're doing this process, the slower your computer is going to be because of all the processing that it needs to do. Photoshop actually does a pretty amazing job at trying to calculate what is going to be the sharp areas and what are what's not going to be the sharp areas. So you can see that my computer has finished processing here and we have our finished image. Our backdrop is still nice and blurred out in the background. Our objects that we have focused on this image are all in sharp focus. And if we look over here at the palette, you can see what's going on. So what's happening here is that all the individual layers and Photoshop has tried to calculate what is sharp. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to shut off each of these layers so you can see what's going on here when we look at the screen. So as I shut off each of the layers, you can see that Photoshop has actually gone out and tried to find sharp contrast, kind of like focus peaking, and it's doing its own peaking to find out where that is. Now, this isn't always perfect, so you may have to go back in there and make some adjustments. In order to do that, I'm just going to use as an example here. None of these are probably a perfect example to show you this, but I'm going to just show you how to turn this thing off. Unlink the mask. And the reason why you want to do that is because you want to be able to go in there and make some adjustments. You can shut off just by clicking on that little chain. And you can also shut off this mask completely. By holding the Shift key, you'll get a big X across there, and it shows that the, the mask is shut off. So there you can see the mask on and off. The reason why we might want to do this is maybe that our transition, transition isn't quite perfect here. So in order to adjust that, make sure that your mask is selected by clicking on it. And then grab the brush tool. And you can go in there and paint objects back in. This is actually really good if you're, if you're finding that the transition is not quite right. And you can always go back in there and adjust. Once that's done, you can turn things back on, and then you can see whether or not that that worked out. So there you go. We have all the images that are combined now. We've made any adjustments that we made, and this should make our completed image. You can go back in there, and you can crop this image afterwards. Let's give it a crop here just to get rid of that edge there. And you can even flatten the image if, you're, if you so choose. And that will make it all one layer, and you can save it out. Thank you very much for watching this. Don't forget to subscribe and look for future episodes.